Now, the 5AA forecast. Cloudy today, 25, sunny and 28 tomorrow. The fine weather to continue on the weekend, a top of 29 on both Saturday and Sunday. More news as it happens on 5AA. Peter Godfrey, Talking Adelaide on 1395 5AA. Five minutes past five. Uh, what have we got temperature-wise? 15 degrees at the moment. Let's jump across the ditch, catch up with uh, Selwyn Manning, uh, new title editor of the of Evening Report NZ, the new home of New Zealand's independent interactive debate. That's a big title, Selwyn. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it sound flesh? It does. Great. Congratulations <laughs> on your new, uh, your new website. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, people will uh, want to check that out. It's a real easy one eveningreport.nz. Yeah. So we, we, we've dropped the. Uh, we've got the ability to drop that co kind of thing, the co. Yeah. You know, so just going to the straight NZ these days, and it's um, much better. Real good. But uh, it's good. We launched the um, this new initiative on Monday, Peter, and uh, it's been a really good response here, and total positivity, actually, around it. And, yeah. Uh, what, what it does is really it takes the big events of a particular day, and um, we're, we're at, um, we'll look at those big events, and it analyses those in the evening, both um, with written material, but also significantly with live debate and video form. Um, and uh, in a few days, it will open up uh, direct access for public with th- that are able to debate issues and discuss issues amongst okay. themselves with uh, directly with uh, video, audio, or text okay. in lo- in real time. So um, that that's a, that t- technology has been around overseas for a wee while, but it's a first for New Zealand. Okay, so very much yeah. a, a, a multimedia interactive kind of platform. Very much yeah, so. it is very much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fantastic. So, oh, looking we'll good. See how it goes. Oh, and, good. and very much focusing on sort of the, the heavy political stuff and analysis of that. Yeah, there is, and there's also columns like uh, columnists that have um, uh, been a little bit put off by the kind of the viciousness of blogs, mm. uh, yeah. where you know ideas will be attacked. They personally often be attacked, and there's some excellent writers, um, uh, documentary makers, etc. That um, like um, Sumner Burston, for example, she's well awarded for her documentaries overseas. Uh, this Way of Life was an amazing, amazing documentary a few years ago, about three, four years ago. Um, she's got a new one that's done well in the film festivals in Canada um, and that's ready to launch in New Zealand, another documentary called Some Kind of Love. Now, she writes about contemporary things. She's got an excellent column, which is actually the top read column on the site at the moment, um, and it, it really looks at Victoria's Secret, you know, the lingerie mm-hmm. outfit from the United States and how it, could, in her view, uh, commoditises um, young women mm-hmm. and natural desires of people to, to exploit on their... On their um, product. Okay. So it's a real thought-provoking stuff that yeah. she's always done. She's a well-celebrated writer here, but um, she was attacked terribly on social media a couple of years ago about her views about Afghanistan war um, and threatened with her life and all sorts. And so this is the first oh. time she's felt comfortable enough to come back writing. Yeah, yeah. As you say, blogs can be pretty vicious things <laughs> at yes. the best of times. Yeah, indeed. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. So eveningreport.nz, easy to remember. Uh, yep. One issue I'm sure you <laughs> will be looking at uh, quite a bit, uh, the, 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 the spying issue ongoing there with uh, oh, the yeah. uh, 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 revelations from Edward Snowden continuing to roll out. Yeah, they're continuing to roll out, as you say there, Peter. Um, this week, for example, um, the United States intelligence documents that were released um, show that New Zealand signals spy base people that just about know this is a household word these days after I've spoken to you so many times on it. But the GCSB, that's our communication signal spy base here, um, it has been used mainly by the United States to conduct target surveillance on operations against our main trading partners. Now, this this um, this base, the GCSB base, it's uh, equipped with United States technology, clearly, um, mm. and it's, it, it equips our signal spies to target diplomats and officials of China, Japan, East Asian countries, India, Pakistan, Iran. Now, significantly, Peter, those are all pretty strong, you know, the strongest, in a sense, putting um, Australia aside, our trading partners here Mm. in New Zealand. It's a delicate thing when you start going after these people. It's also off New Zealand's patch. Last week on on the Brekkie show on on, uh, 5AA, I spoke about uh, how... New Zealand was found to have been spying on the Pacific side, mm. um, so on the Polynesian side, up to Melanesia and the Solomon Islands, um, French territories in New Caledonia, and also um, French Polynesia and Tahiti, etc. The, that, that, that's on our patch, in a sense, where New Zealand is located in the Pacific region. Mm. This 
uh, revelation. This 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 part of the investigation shows that it it's being used. New Zealand space is being used for stuff outside of the region. So it's a sophistication and a reach that no one really anticipated it was doing. It's also into areas where Australia um, may be more sensitive to provide such surveillance. Um, if you think of the delicate balance between Australia and China and yeah. certainly other things, obviously Indonesia is strongly on your mm. patch. Mm. Um, but New Zealand is being used to do stuff in an area which you would think our politicians would think, hey, 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 come on, this is a no-go area. Now, one of the... Um, and of, you know, one of one of the um, the, the uh, political scientists um, and also a security analyst who actually used to work for um, he's an American citizen and New Zealand citizen. He used to work for um, the United States security apparatus. Let's put it that way. Um, now he was on the Evening Report NZ site that we just spoke about just before um, last night, and he was saying that he believes that there will be a huge backlash for New Zealand diplomatically, that our trade diplomats, our trade envoys overseas, will be working day and night to try and actually apologise to their counterparts in these countries that I mentioned there, that's, you know, the ASEAN countries in particular, um, that, are, that are of a big concern and led by, obviously, concerns around spying on, on um, the communications of China's important officials. Um, that, that kind of thing coming through, Peter, is obviously um, going to have a backlash. Now, Paul Buchanan, the man I just mentioned there, uh, he, he, he is saying that um, New Zealand's trade dependency um, is such that it's risking an awful lot when it's got one leg firmly planted in the United States' need for security and um, intelligence uh, operations, but then straddling with its other leg right across into the Southeast Asian na- nations and, and are absolutely trade dependent. He says at some stage, and he said for a few years now, as this kind of thing has been building up, that there'll be a it, New Zealand won't be able to maintain its position. It's going to trip up one way or the other. And I'll put to him, is this the trip wire? And he says he believes so. Okay. This, you know, now, there's still debate about whether or not that kind of impact is going to make it out into the public arena or whether or not it will be held you know, amongst the diplomats and, and government-to-government negotiations that doesn't see the public. Um, uh, the public doesn't see the light of day, but it's certainly, certainly got the New Zealand government rattled here. Yeah, uh, I guess the the the, 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 the fear from that would be—I mean, bad enough, you know—the the, the spying nature of it all, and, and you know, issues of privacy and all the rest of it. But if it sort of gets into issues of trade, uh, you know, that I, I guess you know, look at worst case scenario, that would filter down to you know, affecting negatively businesses across New Zealand, individual businesses, oh, I- and. Absolutely, yeah. he talked about that, and also the consumers being able to pick up. Well, yeah. where's that product that I've been buying for some time that's been yeah. made overseas? Yeah. Um, it's suddenly not there. Uh, you know, this is the extreme end of it. And remember mm. too that the size of New Zealand, its location in the world. You know, some say it's at the bottom of the world, and it's, you know, if you look at the map, and it's pretty close to it. Um, we are a trade dependent nation, mm. like most nations are, but New Zealand very vulnerable in that area. A slight fluctuation, Peter, and it can really start to affect the well-positioned um, um, areas of our economy. Um, you know, New Zealand in the last 20, 30 years, but particularly in the last 20 years, our diplomatic efforts, while there have been humanitarian elements to it and regional security aspects to it and things like that, it's primarily tried to actually cement excellent relationships with those nations that we've been found to have been spying on at the behest of the United States. Mm. The other thing that came up outside of the trade areas was I put the question to Paul Buchanan, who's been analysing the impact of this kind of stuff, and he he said to me last night that, okay, well, the, the United States has looked at New Zealand in his view and sees that we've got virtually no oversight of our intelligence apparatus. It, 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 he said, it, you might as well say New Zealand has no oversight. And it's the kind of operations that the, the United States, he believes, would uh, intelligence agencies in the United States would be sensitive to doing themselves if it's getting New Zealand to do on its behalf. Um, now, Nicky Hager, who's the investigative journalist behind the documents that are being released, he's, he's got these directly from 
Edward Snowden and also the intercept that's Green, Glenn, Glenn Greenwald's uh, new site over in the United uh, over in Brazil and based in the United States. And and Nicky Hager is saying himself that the evidence is now showing that the GCSB base in the South Island is not necessarily a New Zealand base. It looks to him in his investigations that it is a United States base and New Zealand is its governors, meaning its Prime Minister and its ministers, have very little knowledge of mm. what is actually really going on in our name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Indeed. That's concern in that way. Yeah, and this is going to be ongoing. I'm, I'm quite certain of that. We'll be hearing Absolutely. more from you about it. Just a, a quick question. Someone uh, sent you a message earlier just to see if I can ask you a question. Uh, your former PM, Helen Clark, uh, slated down as a possible replacement for Ban Ki-moon as Secretary yes. General of the UN, UN when he uh, finishes his term? Yes, um, the, the, the talk, let's call it the chatter, the chatter. around this is intensifying. Mm. And um, your correspondent there is absolutely right. Helen Clark is positioned very strongly to have a real go should she put her name right firmly in the ring there. Um, it's believed that her, her leadership of the UNDP and the UN Development Programme, um, which is one of the more powerful um, areas of the United Nations, has actually convinced a lot of the developing nations in the world that um, she is deserving of, of, of that position. Now, in the past, the UN has been seen as a very much a male-dominated kind of arena yeah. in a sense that women just wouldn't have a show. Now over the last 10 years there's been huge efforts to try and put gender equality into you know, such positions and her position in the UNDP was really one of those two I, we would have to say. But yeah Peter, to answer yes, Helen Clark is well positioned to right. have a and good go for that. Thank you Moon, what, December next year isn't it? End, end of next year sometime his term comes up. I, I believe so. Oh, okay. Um, and she, she's a uh, she. Helen Clark's a formidable politician mm. and knows how to actually get things. When she was Prime Minister too, she developed huge support um, well, among those uh, uh, Southeast Asian nations that we're talking about, but also the Middle Eastern nations. Yeah. Um, Oman could go through a big long list. Bahrain, all of these ones that generally women wouldn't, as leaders, would not get a um, you know a fair go in many respects. But okay. um, you know she, she's Woman obviously a commanding presence. Yeah, Force, yeah indeed. absolutely. Indeed. So we'll just take a quick break, and we'll come back in a moment with some more uh, news from your part of the world. Okay, Peter. Wait a so Bye. Manning's with us from uh, uh, even. I've got to remember this one. Eveningreport.nz. Jeremy Cordo. Hi, Margaret. Uh, I was just thinking to you about the salaries in Parliament. Isn't it ridiculous? It's beyond what... And these guys, if they weren't doing this, what would they be doing? Would they be digging holes? No. Would, would, would they be fixing fences? No. Well, they don't have to pay these guys half a million dollars. That's right. Nobody else would. Why are we? Talking Adelaide with Jeremy Cordo. Weeknights from 8 on 1395. Adelaide's 5AA. The step-by-step -step guide to... South Australia's ultimate firefighters. Step one, tune. Step two, listen. To the weather, it's looking hot and dry again today. With it's not that hard to be bushfire ready. Simple steps, like listening to local radio and staying informed, is one way to have a fighting chance this bushfire season. And for more information, visit the CFS website. A message brought to you by the CFS and the Government of South Australia. If you drive a truck for a living, you know how costly a breakdown can be. Don't gamble on cheap parts and labour when you can have quality parts fitted by expert technicians, guaranteed. Scania Trucks Adelaide service all makes at great rates. Check these out. Rolling brake test, $95. Wiper blade replacement fitted from $58. Trailer wheel alignment, $199. You'll also find a full range of parts, accessories and merchandise. Scania Trucks at Wingfield. Top mechanical servicing without the top price. Graham's a keen cyclist. He's not a pro or anything. And he's only just plucked up the courage to wear Lycra. So if he had a fall and broke his wrist, Sportsmed SA is there to help him get back on track and back on the bike. With a modern specialist hospital at Stepney and a team of expert orthopaedic surgeons, Graham could be back on his bike in no time. New Lycra and all. Ask your doctor for a referral to Sportsmed SA. 
Visit sportsmed.com.au. The humble reverse cycle air conditioner can set your power meter spinning out of control. Mine did. Thanks to EnviroTemp, it doesn't anymore. A single installation of EnviroTemp improves the energy efficiency of your reverse cycle system by 2 to 8 degrees. From 349 on a split system, from 549 on a ducted, book now and receive a free service worth up to $150. EnviroTemp is available direct from Mannix Air Conditioning. 1300 626649. Save even more. Book online manix.com.au 1395 Adelaide's 5AA This is Peter Godfrey And we're taking a look at things happening across the ditch in New Zealand uh, Selwyn Manning, editor of eveningreport.nz is with us Now Selwyn, next story um, an, an ecotourism threat that involves uh, uh, milk powder products there in New Zealand yeah, that's right, Peter. Now, th- this is kind of tagged in a way look, to what we were saying earlier on, how New Zealand is very vulnerable to any disruption to its trade interests or mm. sensitivities around this product um, from overseas countries. Now, um, this week it was revealed by the New Zealand police and also the government's primary industry wing, uh, the Ministry of Primary Industry, um, and the Prime Minister himself. Now, they, they held press conferences about how some three months ago, a threat was made to the officials that New Zealand that uh, if New Zealand did not stop using 1080 poison, uh, then you know and that that poison is used against this as a sidebar against rats, possums, stoats, weasels in our forests, etc. Mm. Then high grade. 1080 poison would be used to contaminate agriculture giant Fonterra's milk product. And that's that milk powder that is infant formula for baby yeah. formula, etc. Now, three months ago, the threat was made, and public knew nothing of it. It was a little bit of chatter around, the media got onto it, and, and, and the government tried to tidy this up by going public with it this week, Peter. Now, it, since then, the government has said that they don't believe that the, the threat uh, can actually be you know, can't, the person can't do it. It can't um, take the threat through. But they're still taking it seriously. Even yesterday, they actually changed regulation so that wherever 1080 poison is, there's strict regulations about its usage and the, the qualities and the quality of it and who's got it that's signing it off, et cetera, et cetera. And also China responded immediately that every batch of milk product that leaves New Zealand for China's shores has to have a certificate accompanying it that guarantees that it is free of any contamination. So there's already been a response there. The New Zealand dollar even fluctuated yesterday, um, and many said it was due to um, the uncertainty about the impact should this threat be carried out against the milk product. Um, the other thing is that New Zealand is saying that it hasn't noticed a big blip in the last 24, 36 hours relating to the demand on its milk product. But the smaller players, the ones that perhaps are exporting like a couple of million dollars worth um, per month as opposed to the Fonterra giant who's just a mega position um, milk product producer and exporter in the world. The smaller ones have been caught out in a sense that a lot of their product is already on ships heading toward China and there's already knowing that the certificate's weren't in place and weren't necessary when they left New Zealand shores. So there's there's millions of dollars worth for many players um, that is, you know, potentially going to be sent back to New Zealand. Back, okay. Um, ramification for jobs too, possibly. Well, if it continues in the longer on, term, yeah, yeah. Let, let you know. Let's look at that. You know, um, public um, impact on this is one um, a lack of confidence in the products, not just here in New Zealand, but significantly overseas, that in turn, and then drop off in usage uh, or the purchasing of those products, it means that people are out of work, doesn't mm, it? You know, mm. um, it's, it's the kind of thing that New Zealand has been crowing about for years, Peter, where it says, you know, this is our white gold. Australia's yeah. got its, you know, min- mineral stuff, it's got its iron ore and it's got it, you know, stuff it can dig in a, in a hole in the middle of the desert and it's got money coming back from it, you know, and, and we all know the difficulties with commodity and the drops in commodity price, but New Zealand in a way felt so comfortable in its white gold, that white milk powder, that, uh, you know, it was, yeah, and it, it has benefited through the financial crisis from the stability yeah. of returns from such things. But this kind of thing that is eroding down, it shows how vulnerable New Zealand is in such areas. And, you know, in and, and many ways, um, also what is going on here is 
uh, like I mentioned, Paul Buchanan um, earlier on in the early part of the bulletin relating to this, the buying stuff. Well, he, he made a point last night on Evening Report, and he said that you know um, all of the tightening up uh, on the draconian laws relating to surveillance that New Zealand government has put through, it didn't pick up, and it still hasn't been able to identify who made the threat and how serious the threat is. But he did put a cautionary note here, mm-hmm. and, uh, and I've, I've got to say there is an understanding that the 1080 samples that were sent to official government officials from the person making these threats was a very, very high-grade 1080. It wasn't the kind of stuff that if you were wanting to go and get 1080 poison to poison the possums or stoats on your farm, it wasn't that great. It was high-grade stuff, and he says it's potentially uh, been imported, purchased over the internet, imported through our ports without being picked up. Okay. So there's, there's real concern there, and that it may be a little bit more serious than what the uh, government is trying to lead the public to believe. Any any knowledge on what the motivation would be if 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 they're calling for the 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 uh, you know uh, 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 discontinuation of the poisoning of you know rats and possums and things? What what's the motivation behind yeah. all this? There, there's been the, um, 1080 is extremely controversial yeah, it's yeah, used yeah, yeah, in, here as well uh, here over there too. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, our Department of Conservation uses it to maintain, you know, our, the ecologies in our, our, our forests. Mm. It says it's not the only tool in the toolbox, but it's the most significant and the most effective is the official line on mm. such things. The, the waterways in New Zealand, um, there are many who believe that they are affected by it, um, that it's been so, the, the dumping of it has been such that it's got into waterways that when children are swimming in some of the waterways that, you know, their eyes will be red. There's an instance last year where um, a young um, uh, two women were picnicking um, by by a stream. Next thing, they started to feel pretty queasy and they re- realised that they were sitting amongst a whole lot of stuff that had been dropped from a helicopter. Um, there was very little signage around warning them of such things. And um, they, in one case, um, her health looks like it's been affected permanently. If not, um, tragic, it could be end up with tragic consequences in their life lost from it. So mm-hmm. the, this kind of thing, the, 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 the sensitivities around the use of 1080 is absolute um, amongst many, and it seems that some are prepared to use almost terrorism tactics, well, it is terrorism yeah, tactics yeah. and threatening this, um, to actually get their message across. Yeah, yeah, frightening stuff. All right, so Owen, many thanks for joining us on the program this morning. You have a great week. Uh, we'll catch you, of course, again on breakfast tomorrow morning, just after uh, 6.30 on 5AA, and we'll talk to you again this time next week. Perfect, Peter. All the best. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week. Sewell Manning, editor of uh, the new website, eveningreport.nz, New Zealand's independent interactive debate. Go and have a check it out and take a look. Get involved. Uh, Time is 27 minutes past five. News coming up in a moment with Marcus Wilson. Then more of your calls. Join in the conversation, 8223 0000, the number to call here at 1395 Adelaide's 5AA. 5AA is live 24-7 on on digital radio. It's all the 5AA programs you love, but with improved sound quality and crystal clear reception. With no interference from power lines, it makes listening even easier. Digital radios are simple to use and are available from all good electrical retailers. Adelaide's 5AA, now available on digital radio. At BMW, we have a range of ultimate driving machines as spirited, energetic and uncompromising as you are. The BMW 1 Series, 2 Series, X1 and Z4 not only represent maximum driving pleasure and efficiency, they embody all the hallmarks of luxury and performance BMW is famous for at a price that is less than you would expect. So why compromise when the ultimate driving machine beckons? Visit your preferred BMW dealer and meet your match today. Do you like helping others and love dogs? Then the Royal Society for the Blind Guide Dog Service needs you. Puppy educators at